STV, votre télé. You're watching STV and it is one o'clock on our studio clock. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on this edition of the news on STV. Coming up against conflicting figures on the casualties of the October 1 violent demonstration in the Northwest and Southwest regions, the Minister of Communication, Isa Chiruma Bakawi, has revealed the official report of deaths and damages incurred in both regions. Stay with us for the details. In sport, 22 players out of the 23 uh, who have been invited by coach Igo Bose have answered present. Those who fail to turn out and reasons for the rejection in this newscast. Good afternoon once more and thanks for joining us on this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. And as uh, mentioned earlier, official figures on the casualties of the October 1 violent demonstrations in the Northwest and Southwest regions have been revealed by the Minister of Communication. Isa Chiruma Bakawi puts the death toll to about 10. Lagnet Abaje has uh, more. Since the 1st October 2017 demonstrations in the Northwest and Southwest regions of Cameroon, different statistics of registered losses in terms of human and material have been published on the social media by individuals and also made available by different online media sources. Late this 2nd of October 2017, government spokesperson, Minister of Communication, Isla Chiruma Bakari, has revealed the official statistics of registered losses. He has disclosed that more than 10 persons have died in the Northwest region, of which five died during the massive protests in Kumbu, two being prisoners. Isa Chiruma Bakari has also indicated that 135 prisoners have been transferred from the Kumbu prison. Sessionists were wounded alongside five registered deaths from the population. Government spokesman has also asserted that 400 armed men attacked the town of Manfe and 200 individuals from Nigeria attempted to attack the frontiers around Ekok, but they were stopped by military men of Cameroonian and Nigerian nationalities. In the press declaration of October 2nd, Cameroon's Minister of Communication, Isa Chiruma Bakari, also gave the balance sheet on the 2nd October twin suicide bombing attack in the Far North region at 5.10 a.m., leaving three dead, two female suicide bombers, a civilian at Mozogo, in the Mayo Muskuta subdivision, Mayo Chanaga division. International bodies have also condemned the use of force in the two English-speaking regions of Cameroon and insist on dialogue to put an end to the present crisis in Cameroon. John Possama. Going by a statement published by the spokesman for the Secretary General of the United Nations, the international body strongly condemns the act of violence reported in the southwest and northwest regions of Cameroon on October 1st, including reported loss of lives. The spokesman of the UN Secretary General in the declaration is calling on Cameroonian authorities to investigate these concerns and calls for dialogue to be opened between both parties. The La Francophonie Secretary General, Mikhail Zhang, joins the United Nations to call for proper dialogue in the wake of the tensions ongoing in the two regions of the country, saying that the current tensions are very worrying and violence must never be an option to be heard. The Secretary General of La Francophonie in a communique also highlights that children must not be starved their right to education and applauds the measures taken by Cameroonian authorities in responding to the expectations of the population of the Northwest and Southwest regions. Meanwhile, human rights group Amnesty International are reporting over 17 casualties in the happenings over the weekend in the two Anglophone regions of Cameroon, saying that the escalation has reached a crisis point. The human rights group has also called for an immediate halt in the use of excessive force in the northwest and southwest regions of the country.
also the original director of the National Democratic Institute for West and Central Africa, has called for an end to violence in the Northwest and Southwest regions. Dr. Fomuyo Christopher was reacting after the events of October 1 in the two English-speaking regions of the country. Let's hear him. My fellow compatriots, it's with a very heavy heart that I come to you today after the very horrific events that occurred in our country on October 1st. I come to you today after watching images and hearing stories about dozens of deaths, hundreds of wounded, and even many more arrested. I come to you today to express my deepest condolences to the families of the bereaved, to the bereaved families, to our communities, and to the nation as a whole. I express my condolences to the entire population of Cameroon, because we as a people, our dignity and our humanism are diminished by these acts of violence and senselessness. As I've said, for over a year now since this crisis began, there is no room for violence and destruction. We must make room for dialogue and understanding. The time for healing must begin. The barbarism, the demagoguery, the inflammatory speeches and hatred must end. The expanded nature of the current crisis that requi then requires dialogue at the highest level to be led by individuals in whom Cameroonians still have confidence and trust. We are in a defining moment of our history. Our country is at a crossroads and nothing short of fairness, thoughtfulness, and genuine and humane leadership should be allowed to prevail. Thank you for your time and attention. Away from that, circulation on the second bridge over the river Bori has been effective since the 10th of October 2017, that is yesterday, Tuesday. Government officials have reiterated the October 31st deadline will be respected for the handover of the second bridge here in Douala. Veronica Aji tells us more. As early as 7.30 a.m., Persons using the Vuri Bridge to catch up with their daily activities were overwhelmed with the opening of the second bridge still under construction. The new bridge has just been opened this morning and it's, a, it's actually a pleasure to all of us because we have been suffering a lot, especially in the, in the area of uh, traffic at this level of uh, Bonaberry. So as from today, I think... Uh, we are grateful. The whole population, actually, everybody is happy with this uh, new bridge that has been opened and put into circulation. Though this opening is partial, bikes, taxis, private cars and heavy-duty trucks can access freely. At the moment, just one of the two lanes is functional, that is, the Bonasama Rompuan Dedo section of the road with three motorways for free and suitable circulation. To the government delegate to the Douala City Council, this falls in line with the respect of deadlines, and if all goes well, works between Bonasama and Dedo would have advanced considerably. The October 31, 2017 deadline, government officials affirm, will be respected with the second bridge fully accessible. Bonaberry, they do, they do, Bonaberry. But the first bridge over the Buri River will be closed for works as well. Ce sont des infrastructures qui coûtent cher, halte au vandalisme. 
Dr. Fritz Ntonentone urges the population to make good use of this infrastructure while avoiding urban disorder. On fait des déplacements inutiles, donc halte des ordres urbains sur le, 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 le nouveau pont. Traffic has reduced, though entrance into Rompon Dido is not all that easy. For the moment, the 900 meters long and 25 meters wide bridge is almost completely built, but works on the west entrance into the city of Douala are to be delivered by the end of September 2018. Despite the grounding of commercial activities in the northwest and south southwest regions, uh, the country's revenue has witnessed applaudable progress, according to the Minister of Finance. This follows a report from the first quarter of the 2017 fiscal year. John Paul Sama has details of that report. The balance sheet made public by the Minister of Finance, Alamin Usman May, on the first quarter of the ongoing fiscal year shows encouraging signs of improvement. This comes due to an increase in the income and a drop in expenditure amidst the difficult moment Cameroon is going through. According to the finance minister, the budgetary income for the first semester of 2017 registered an increase of 160.3 billion francs CFA as compared to 2016. All this comes amid the Anglophone crisis, which is hampering economic activities as well as the fight against Boko Haram and insecurity in the eastern region. This increase can also be accredited to local income recovered from loans and gifts, which stands at over 437.5 billion francs CFA, contrary to the 360.3 billion francs CFA registered in 2016. Meanwhile, total expenditure has been economized by over 166 billion francs CFA, a decrease which has been attributed to current expenditure by the finance boss. Let's talk something else in this newscast, and I propose that we focus on headsets, uh, headsets which have become one of the accessories uh, in this 21st century used most especially by the youth. But what are the effects of these headsets uh, on our health and also on our daily activities? John Paul Sama. It is estimated that over 1.2 million people annually lost their lives listening to music with their headsets while moving along or crossing the road. This situation is worrying because the figures keep tripling as the years go by. In Cameroon, the situation is no different as so many people have been caught in the web of this misfortune. A young man was reported dead in Bamenda after being crushed by a truck because he was unable to hear the truck approaching. In the economic capital Douala, most youths are seen on a daily basis crossing the road with their earphones on. To most of them, like this girl, listening to music while walking is a way of doing her job effectively. Others just enjoy listening to music for pleasure. Medics say people wearing headsets can suffer from inattentional blindness, which is a reduction in attention to their environment. Headphone wearers have also been known to suffer severe pains in the ears, and it's also dangerous for the human brain as a result of the dangerous electromagnetic waves it emits. Health experts advise that tiny earphones should be dumped for the larger ones with less side effect and avoid loud music. In sport in this newscast, 22 players out of 23 have answered to the invitation of coach Igor Boss at uh, the Yaoundé Military Stadium in the team's first training session that was yesterday. A reporter, Lionel Apaje, tells us who faced to turn out and why. Out of the 23-man squad of the Indomitable Lions crafted by coach Hugo Bros ahead of the 5 2018 World Cup qualifier match between Nigeria and Cameroon Saturday, October 7th, the defender Banana Yaya did not answer present at the first training organized this 3rd of October at the military stadium in Yaoundé. The press team of the Indomitable Lions justifies his absence on grounds of his tight schedule at the level of his club in Greece. 
Team captain Benjamin Mukanjo has headed the training team that is three goalkeepers, seven defenders, three midfielders, nine attackers, including Jay Clinton, who has not been part of several matches under the supervision of the head coach and a technical team. Cameroon and Algeria will be playing round three of Group B match for 2018 FIFA World Cup Russia, yet both teams have been eliminated to take part in the competition. For Cameroon's head coach, the match is an opportunity to restore the confidence of his players and improve their strength to effectively participate in the upcoming 2019 AFCON Games to be hosted by Cameroon. And that brings us to the end of this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. Stay on STV for more news and join Lila Nganzo at exactly 7 p.m. for the news in the French language and Peter Soci at 8 p.m. for the news in English. Meantime, stay in the company of programs on STV. Good afternoon and thanks for watching. STV, votre télé.